Today is the big day, transplanting these beauties into the Dutch Beto buckets. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Wishwell Farms. Yes, today is the big day, transplanting day. Our first tomato planting is going to be transplanted into the Dutch Beto buckets. I just about have everything ready to go. It's a perfect day outside for doing this. Well, maybe just a touch breezy. I don't like to do this on windy days because the plants kind of get knocked over when I'm moving them from one greenhouse to the other. But we do have phenomenal, almost spring-like temperatures today. It's going to be up to 68, I think, and it's already 60 degrees. So it feels really nice, perfect temperatures for moving tomatoes. In years past, I've had temperatures barely 30 degrees with a foot of snow on the ground and would often have to hold off transplanting into the main greenhouse here until the snow melted off or the temperatures got above freezing because I was always worried of uh, harming the plants you know, to exposure while moving them the 150 feet from the starter house down to the tall greenhouse number one here. But we don't have to worry about that today. Let's uh, start getting tomato plants moved over here. Uh, my son is going to be helping me. One of my sons will be helping me transplant today. And they are busting at the seams. Uh, we're 10 days behind schedule. And it's not anything to do with uh, temperatures or anything like that. I seeded them late this year because of a Florida vacation. I had to get that out of the way, get back home and seed. I didn't want to have to worry about germinating seeds and having someone else take care of them while I was on vacation in Florida. As you can see, these things are enormous. They stretched just a little bit taller than I like. They're right at two feet. We have two foot bamboo stakes in here. You know, they are pushed into the rock wool cubes a couple inches, but you can see the tomato plants are above the bamboo stakes. And they got some nice clusters, tomato clusters starting to form. So it won't be long until we start seeing the yellow blossoms open up. And we'll have fruit forming here probably in a week to 10 days. I've talked about the air pruning in the past. Look at all those roots that shot out the bottom of the cube. But then they stopped growing longer. Yeah, they might come out a quarter inch to a half inch, but then they grow back inside the cube, filling up the cube. We don't want a great big mass of roots sprawling out the bottom of the cube. So that's how we like them look. And as soon as those things get into the Dutch Beto buckets, with the perlite, they'll really shoot the roots down pretty quickly. These little blue wagons are what we use to shuttle all of our plants to the greenhouse around that one. And we can put four flats in each wagon. I have two of these. So we can move eight flats at a time over to the other greenhouse. And there's not really a better way to do it unless I would just load them into the back of a truck, but then it's harder to get them all out because you got to hop up in there and slide them out. So this method works really good for us. Uh, I have had to use a box truck a couple times over the last 15, 20 years due to the cold temperatures. A noisy jet overhead. Um, I remember one year we actually had to put a heater, plug a heater into the back of our box truck, warm the box truck up, and then unplug the heater, put the plants in real quick, shut the door, and then back up to the greenhouse where they're, where they're gonna be transplanted uh, because it was so cold. It was like in the teens. And I was afraid the plants would get, um, you know, burnt on the leaf tips, being exposed to that cold temperature, even though it's, uh, you know, only for 150 feet. But uh, yeah, this is perfect weather for doing this. And even though we have 75 flats to move down there, 15, 20 minutes of rolling them down there with the blue wagons. We'll have it done and be ready to set them in the Beto buckets. All right, we got our wagon of plants. We'll grab two, bring them over here to the Beto bucket, smooth out, level out the perlite, give them a little wiggle, 
and then we jam down the bamboo stake about an inch into the perlite to help hold them up and then we're moving our little ring clip up a little higher on the plant if they're long some of them are really starting to flop over because they're so much taller than a bamboo stake once we get the entire row planted we will then take our stake and stick it right into the corner of the rock wool cube and we want to stick the stake into the rock wool cube straight up and down if it's too much at an angle like this i have seen the water not make it down the stake and start dripping right here where the hose or the tube attaches to the plastic stake and then it would miss the plant so we want to put it straight up and down into the corner of the rock wool cube it could be all the way in there but it's just easier for us to place it right in the corner of the cube we will leave it there for about two to three weeks and then once these roots have shot down into this bucket and start spreading out within the perlite we will then take the stake and move it out of the cube right into the perlite like that we don't want to push it down too deep like that because then the roots will grow right up into that stake and plug the area where the water drips out so we just put it in far enough that it's going to stay usually about inch and a half to two inches the reason we do this is because if we leave it in here the entire season this cube will always stay wet on top and it promotes more algae growth you can see there's a lot of green algae growing on top but as soon as we take that dripper out and put it here that cube will all dry out there will be no moisture within the cube it's not needed because 99 percent of the roots will be down in here all the way to the bottom of the bucket and that's what we want we want the water and the fertilizer to go into the perlite and the roots to take up the water and fertilizer down within the bucket not just stuck into this little cube and a second reason if we left this up here it wouldn't promote the root growth down there like i mentioned and then when we start leaning and lowering these plants and there's some tension on the plant you know from leaning it like this it can often uproot and pull the cube out because so many of the roots are condensed into this small cube instead of down in the bucket where they belong so very important to remember to remove this stake once they have settled in and really rooted in and put it into the perlite like that All right, we finished transplanting three rows. These three rows are Geronimo. Then we have one row of Torero, and then the fifth row will be Andero. Uh, this middle row, we've already put the drip stakes in. Then we just need to do it on these first two rows, and we'll start pumping some water to them, and they should perk right up. The perlite is very dry right now. I don't pre-soak my buckets. I know a lot of people probably do, but a lot of times I am still repairing and fixing plug drippers and drip lines the day before we're transplanting. So what I do is just plant all the plants into the perlite in the Dutch Beto buckets and then put the drippers in them and I'll just run extra water for the next four, five, six days until the buckets are completely saturated and then I can uh, back it off a little bit and just irrigate them on their uh, normal cycle which we'll get into that, all that later when we start mixing the fertilizer and acid and talking about our computer and our irrigation system over here but today we're just going to be doing the transplanting and getting water to them and making sure everything is good to go in here as far as the ventilation and the heating and all that good stuff the water is currently on you can see how it's coming out of that dripper stake pretty good that's the way we want it to look just going to pop it in there two for each bucket a lot of times what happens if you don't start at one end the drippers don't always exactly line up with the buckets and if you mess up one dripper the entire row has to be redone because they all have to be moved over one. So even though this is a very easy job, you still have to pay attention that you're putting a dripper, two drippers into each bucket. 
And looky here, I found one that's not working. Very slowly, see that very slow drip? That's not good enough. It could just be plugged right here. It might have some junk in it. I think it's gonna be okay, so I'll just give this a little tap on there, make sure there's no material at the end clogging it up. There it is. Okay, transplanting is done here in greenhouse one. Only five more plantings to go. It feels good to have this one done. The plants are happy to be down in those Dutch Beto buckets so they can shoot their roots down in that perlite. We're currently just using straight water to help soak those buckets because they're gonna really, uh, the dry perlite will really wick the moisture right out of those cubes. We don't want them to dry out. The ones that are kind of droopy and floppy right now, they will perk right back up by tomorrow morning. But we have to keep a close eye on things because if something plugs up, you know, this is the perfect time of the year to fix the issue before these plants really start taking off. Uh, next on the agenda, in the next video, we're gonna be mixing fertilizer and acid to feed these plants properly and also dropping the string trellis, the strings from the trellis above with these tomato hooks. And they will be pulled down and clipped to the plants so the plants can continue to grow up the string. Uh, also on the agenda for the next video, we'll be working down in the grape house. The grape tomatoes are ready to go. Uh, they're planted into coconut core slabs, not Dutch Beto buckets with perlite. So it's a little different system, and I'll show you all that. Um, but we got a lot of cleanup to do down in there. We gotta sweep the floor up, check all the drippers, and then lay those slabs out before we transplant. Yeah, that's that's what's going on around here. You know, it's it's like 70 degrees today. I feel like I should be out planting corn, but it's far too early. Another month before that's ready to go. But it is nice to feel this warm, sunny weather. So here's a little quick look at the tomato plants. Looking really good. Really healthy. I'm happy with how the plants look this year. And looking forward to uh, being able to start harvesting these tomatoes. Only about six or seven weeks away and we'll be picking red ripe tomatoes out here. Alrighty guys, this is where we're going to wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to give it one of these and consider subscribing if you haven't already so you can follow along in all of our farming operation at Wishwell Farms during 2024. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. We'll see you again real soon down on the farm.